do you play lotto? Well, I can answer that question for you. No, you don't. Because lotto isn't a game. It's a gamble. It is literally a lottery. And the idea that anyone plays lotto is ridiculous because it involves no skill. You buy a ticket, you might be allowed to pick your numbers, but there's no inherent physical skill or trick that makes you play lotto any better than anyone else. It's gambling. It's gambling, pure and simple. And I guess those who support lotto would say that uh, it's good because the money made out of lotto, because no one beats the house with lotto, that goes to worthwhile community projects and smiling kids playing sport on a Saturday morning. But who really is playing, paying the price for our state-sanctioned and indeed uh, organised gambling game? That is a question that has been taxing the mind of investigative journalist Guy Espiner, who uh, joins us on the line uh, now. Guy and welcome to the platform. Great to have you with us. Thanks for the opportunity, Sean. Good to talk to you. All right. Now, this uh, stuff you've worked, this work you've done on, on on Lotto, who is this for? What publication? Who is... Oh, this, this is for, for, Radio, for Radio New Zealand, for RNZ, but, but also all the content sharing partners. So you probably will have seen the story on, on the Herald and stuff and other media as well. Yeah, I, I've, I'll have to ask you because I'm obsessed about it. Did any uh, taxpayer funds by way of the PIJF or New Zealand On Air go to the making of or this investigation? No. No? Was that no. a no? No, good. Okay. All no, right. no, no. Just a, just a, Sean, just a standard project for, for RNZ. All right. Just all my right. day job. Yeah. Okay, Guy, to your mind, what was the most important thing you found discovered about Lotto? Yeah, well, the, uh, the, the first thing to say, I suppose, is this is um, like a five-part series, so there's a lot of uh, quite a bit to come. But this is this is the first story in in that series um, of unpicking exactly how the the state um, gambling company c- company operates and and who's buying it. And so that's the, the first story is is based on on that data about who is actually buying lotto and we found that for retail stores so the physical stores that 70 percent of the sales were from the poorest half of the community um so we also found that so you did that simply by location and the socioeconomic characteristics of where the lotto stores were located we got lotto's own data that they used they use the deprivation index, which is ranks a bunch of scores, basically. Um, but I've translated that to poor and wealthier areas because that's just the simple yeah, language simple, yeah, that we absolutely. would understand. Yeah, yeah and, and so the, the um, data is Lotto's own data that they use to determine where stores go. So, look, they say, they say themselves that it's not entirely accurate. And, and they've got a point in that you could live in Parnell and go to Mangere to buy your lotto ticket. And so you would show up on my data as, you know, having bought your ticket in the poor area of the community. So, look, there are, you know, there's a few wrinkles to it, but, you know, with with a a score like that, you have to say that disproportionately lower-income people are paying for lotto. Okay, because they are the people who want the most hope who get the most out of it uh, in an emotional sense. That's not surprising. And what's wrong with Lotto saying, we'll put our stores, most of our stores, where most of our demand is? Well, that would be fair enough, except that Lotto is now saying, well, actually, we're, we're going to run away from this and, and we are going to take stores out of poor areas because we aren't comfortable with the fact that we are over-representing in those poorer areas and that we've got too many stores there. A, they admit they do. They do admit that they have too many stores, a disproportionate number of stores in higher deprivation areas. They have now made a commitment to the minister because this is all, um, you know, comes under the purview of the Internal Affairs Minister, who's uh, the, the boss of them, if you like, and that they're going to take some of those stores out. So, yeah, you could argue, oh, look, we'll, we'll go after the customers. And, you know, you could translate that through to alcohol outlets and fast food stores, couldn't you, too? Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of media about that. Well, the none of them are um, illegal yeah. activities, Guy. And in a no, free market, not. I guess you can put your store where you want it. It's like you putting can. a gas station next to a road. It seems logical. Yeah, you can, and um, and they have, and now they're saying they don't think it's right, and they're pulling them out. It's probably not my job in this series to say whether or not 
um, that's a good idea or not. I'm just trying to put the facts out there. And the facts are that uh, people disproportionately from lower income areas are buying lotto. Lotto realise this and are doing something about it. Why should you get to be the arbiter of what poor people spend their limited funds on? Isn't it rather patronising? Isn't it rather patronising? Oh, bad poor people having a flutter on the on, on the lotto. I, I think I think that's a fair question, and, and it is something. Of course, I, it is. I, I, <laughs> Carry on. It, yeah, I think that's a fair question, Sean, and it's something that I, I was thinking about uh, as, as we did do this, and I wondered whether that, that could be um, some of the criticism, and I, I think that, that, you know, that's a fair question to raise. So I'm not making a judgment about whether people should buy a lotto or not, um, and I'm not, I'm not making a judgment about whether you should have a certain amount of income um, to buy a lotto. I'm trying to get the facts out there, which are that disproportionately people from lower income areas are, are buying lotto and then we can decide what to do about that. Well, why do we need to do anything like that. about that in a free country? I mean, no, I think we, we could make I think we could make some things and that is because poor people don't, no one likes being poor unless you've got some issues. Um, and what lotto sells uh, is the hope of not being poor through very little effort. Uh, it sells the hope of disproportionate return on a minimal investment. And it's kind of natural, therefore, that people with the least, least, people in the worst situation are going to be those who need hope the most. OK, well, that's, you know, I mean, and, and that's fine. Um, I think you, you need to know first what the facts are and then determine what, okay. if anything, you're going to do about it. Obviously, it's not my job to determine what should be done about it. I don't have that power. Mm. What I do have the power to do is to investigate what the facts are mm. and then the public and the government and others with, with interest in this can decide what to do about it. So mm. my, my job is, is job one. You've got mm. to have a platform, if you like. Yeah. The platform is... And, I'll tell and, and you what, what you may have seen my tweet when your first story came out. I said I get constantly annoyed and journalists do it. Oh, are you playing lotto? Do you play lotto? Isn't that a completely uh, complete mischaracterisation of what lotto actually is? And do, do you think it reflects a kind of subliminal acceptance of lotto or sanitising of lotto to be something other than what it is, which is gambling? Yeah, I think, again, that, that's a very fair question and one we tackle the, Chris, uh, the Chief Executive, Chris Lyman, about. Um, he, he says lotto is a game, and if you walk past your lotto store today, and there'll be many of them... But it's it not a game. Play, hang on, hang on. <laughs> it, it, says, it, it says play here. Um, so they characterise it as a game. But you're right, it's gambling. It's, uh, it, it's regulated under the Gambling Act 2003. It is explicitly gambling. And in fact, I heard you say in your intro, it, it mm. takes no skill. That, that's true because they're not allowed to claim that you, that you have skill. But there's all this other sort of stuff that goes on. And the media's at fault here too because we constantly run stories about lucky stores. People's lucky yeah. numbers, you'll find stories about about a particular store in a particular region, a journalist will say, well, right, that, you know, it's had seven wins in the last few months or whatever. I mean, obviously, statistically, scientifically, that, that is bullshit. It, it doesn't yeah. exist. There, there is no such thing as lucky numbers. There, no, there are no lucky stores. And so I think you need to do a bit of myth-busting around that. Um, and it, it is pure and simple gambling. It's a, ga it's a game of chance. And people need to know the odds, which for Powerball are 1 in 38 million of winning. Yeah. And for Lotto First Division are 1 in 3.8 million. So when you talk about, oh, poor people need to just t take a chance on it and it's a way out of poverty, well... Yeah, but you also need to you also need to make the judgment about what the chances are, and you've got more chance of being struck by lightning and probably bitten by a shark on the same day, yeah. just about, yeah. than, than winning um, these big big prizes. Uh, Guy, are you looking at other aspects of gambling or just lotto in the series? Yeah, good question. Again, I'm I'm just looking at lotto. But do you know why? Um, for a number of reasons. I thought, well. The pokies have been really picked over, and a lot of media have done a, a lot of work on that. Yeah. And the casinos have been picked over very carefully as, as well. And, and it is true that they are, according to the gambling experts, um, are areas of higher harm. Yeah, po pokies in particular are shockers. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, what's interesting about Lotto is we spend one and a half billion with a B on Lotto yeah. a year now. It has gone from 18% market share of the big four in 2010 up to 28%. The only one that's growing in those big four. So you've got the pokies, yeah. the casinos, you've got um, the TAB and Lotto. They're the four sectors that get, have to pay a gambling levy because levy, they're the big ones. And Lotto is the only one that has um, is quietly creeping up. And it's also a state gambling company, which is pretty yeah. wild concept in itself. And I thought, okay, well, this is state-owned, state-run, regulated. Let's have a look at what the harm is, who buys it, and where the money goes. So this series mm. is, as I say, it's about five pieces, mm. and we, we, we pretty much try to unpack how this whole thing works. Okay, when we think about harm from gambling, I think, uh, I, think I guess, an image, um, well-informed or not, forms in my mind that it's things like pokies, and I've heard terrible first-hand accounts of pokies and what they do to, to individuals and the fact that they're associated with licensed premises. Tokoroa, I think, has got one of the highest pokey counts in the world. It's one of the poorest communities uh, in, in, in the country. Um, Lotto seems to be more acceptable because it has been marketed as this game uh, and it's got the bright colours and it's everywhere. It's at, it's at the supermarket, it's at the dairy... Lot and also, I guess they push the, the case that the proceeds of this, this gambling goes to to good, solid Kiwi community uh, projects. Why not just leave Lotto alone, as if you like the acceptable face of gambling? And we do not hear stories about people losing their houses or their marriages due to Lotto addiction, right? Yeah, well. I mean, that's another reason I looked at it, because there, there is an insidiousness about it, though, isn't there? I mean, A, in, when you look at the gambling presentations, there are about 500 people a year who are saying that Lotto is one of the primary sources of their problems. And I've talked to people who've spent tens of thousands, in fact, $100,000 on instant Kiwi. And you can go in there. There are no spending limits. There are spending limits online. Okay, now, now I've got to say, Lotto does have some harm, harm minimisation tools. You can only spend 150 bucks a week or 500 bucks a month online. On the retail side, you can, there's no way that they can, can limit that. So I have talked to people who have got into serious trouble, relationships, houses, jobs, family breakups with, um, with Instant Kiwi, which is their most... Um, their most dangerous game, I suppose, or, or their most risky game. Well, dangerous. It's, a form of it's not a game. It's not a game. Yep. It's not, it's not, you, yep. you, you pull yourself up there. Then. Point to you. Point yes. to you. Accept that. Um, <laughs> it, 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 so that's their most dangerous gambling product, um, and, and people do get into trouble with that. I guess the other point, and you kind of have touched on it, is that you can, you can actually spend a lot of money on Lotto just by doing it, you know, let's say you spend 100 bucks a week on it. That, that, that is really going to add up. And also, that, that's why I looked at, at, you know, these high deprivation areas because obviously that's going to be a, gr a far greater portion of your, of your income if you're, if you're actually doing that. So, yeah, I think there are two types of harm, aren't there? There's the, you know, oh, I got, got absolutely addicted to it and, and, and trashed my life. And there's also the, gee, I've just looked back at the last decade and I could have bought an investment property with the amount that I've spent on lotto or a deposit for it. So, yeah, I think harm comes in, comes in different forms. And I do think you're right that they've got away with the idea that it's acceptable. There are 1,500-odd stores around the country. It is pretty much everywhere. And the way they market it, I mean, they, those ads are brilliant. Um, and they uh, do a very good job of saying, hey, it's normal to have it, have a go. Um, I've got this text through from Josh. Uh, I'll read it out to you. You can respond. Uh, morning, Sean Re Lotto. What is going on with this nanny state? What happened to being an adult, spending your money where one wants, even if Lotto pulled from poor areas and placed them in what may, de may be deemed as wealthy areas? What difference will it make if one wants to buy a ticket? They will. Cheers, Josh. Yeah, well, that's a, that, and that, that's a fair opinion. Um, that's a fair opinion. What, what, what you've got to determine before you start to say, should I do anything about this or not, is what the facts are. And, and now we've got them. And we, we didn't have that. You know, people have always assumed things about Lotto and who buys it. You know, what I hope to do is go, okay, here, here are the facts about what, 
what Lotto is doing, who's buying it, where the money goes. And we, as a country, can determine whether we want to do anything about it. It's, um, that's not my job. All right. Um, are you, do you partake in Lotto? Have you ever partaken in Lotto? Uh, no. No, I don't. Um, I was just trying to rack my brains about whether I've ever bought a lotto ticket. I've thought about it a few times, and I might have bought one years and years and years ago, but no, I don't. Um, I don't. <laughs> I know what the odds are. <laughs> well, do you the gamble? Are, do you go to the GGs? Do you gamble in any other way? Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't. I mean, I have gone to the races for a, you know, for a, for a, for a, for a day out and 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 and. and Died in the Melbourne Cup sweepstake. sweepstake. At the office, yeah, sort of thing, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm look, I'm not taking a moral stand on it, mate, at all. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I just think it's pretty interesting that you've got a state gambling company, and you, how, how does that work? And who's buying it? And how do they, how do they strategize? And and where does the money go? I, I just think that's interesting. I'm not. In fact, my own personal view is you'd be you'd be a moron to advocate prohibition of gambling. I mean, it hasn't worked. Prohibition of anything hasn't worked. So I'm not. I'm not advocating um, for that at all. I'm just trying to work out how the state lottery runs. Yeah. Guy, and some might look at you, and you're a fine fellow. We've we've known each other a long time. You've given up the booze, right? <laughs> and now you're on what some might interpret as the anti gambling bandwagon. Have you had you, some come to I'm Jesus? Just, I'm just trying to emulate you. Sure. <laughs> Well, I, I've got I've too many sins. If I was to write a story about all my sins, I would have a job for life, Guy, and, uh, uh, deliberately. Um, but is it some sort of newfound Puritan, Puritanism? And what response do you get from people when you take on, I guess, what might be seen as moral mm. issues? Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually did think about that too. So yeah, that, that's a good question and, and a fair question. I, I don't think you'll find in this, um, in this series any um, comment on the morality of it. And, and I've just told you, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd, I, I've, as you say, I've gambled on the horses before and I, I don't see any, um, any sense in prohibiting gambling. I don't think there's anything wrong. It, you know, it's a bit like most of those things you just talked about and, and, and alcohol as well. I mean, for most people, you know, they can manage it quite well and, and some people can't and they get into trouble. And, and I think, you, you know, you need to accept all that, eh, when you're looking at any of these issues. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ban alcohol because I had a, a, an issue trying to moderate it. I mean, most people do it do it fine, but you've got to then go and look at what the what the costs and the benefits are before you decide how to how to manage these things. In well, some right. people yeah. want to analyse the costs and benefits. Other people just say, "Let's do it." They live their life somewhat more organically and, and less uh, analytically. I might <laughs> might indeed be one of them. Uh, and that's guy. fine. And yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Fine. Um, but, yeah. I, I guess to some would say, why is this an issue then? Isn't it the individual's right to decide? Um, and I would actually make the observation that pokies are the greatest cancer on people in the current setting and government's woeful uh, lack of meaningful regulation uh, mm. on, on pokies is actually a way bigger mm. issue going yeah, um, I, I sort of think you can tend into sort of whataboutism with, with that and go, you know, oh, what about this? This is worse, or what about that? And, and you'll always find that. So, I, 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 you know, I, I'd end up with not doing hardly any projects because I could go, oh, well, I was going to look at Lotto, which we spend a billion and a half dollars on, Yeah. <laughs> but there's something worse over here, so let's run over here. And I was anticipating a bit of that feedback too, and I'm sure there will be, yeah. be a lot of people who looked at my stuff and went, oh, yeah, God, well, lots of... A lot of little deal. kids on Saturday pokey? morning who won't have the gear bag and the soccer balls. You ever thought about those kids that you're damaging by having a go at Lotto, Guyan? Um, well, this is this is interesting. We will look at that in the series, won't, um, about where, where the money goes. But isn't it interesting that we have, you know, nearly half the money, 42% of it, goes to the Film Commission... Na Taonga Sound and Vision um, and Creative New Zealand and Sports NZ. So, you know, I mean, and that's just bizarre, isn't it? I mean, why would you fund some things direct from government and other? I mean, they are, you know, they're statutory bodies, right? Yeah. 
created New Zealand the Film Commission, great. You know, let, I, I, I've probably watched many of the films. I'm not saying we shouldn't fund it. But isn't it weird that those ones are specifically funded from gambling and their money goes up and down depending on how much money you spend on gambling? Yeah. I just find that, I find that interesting. Well, right? I think, too, Imagine, from no, what no, you've on, said today, on. wouldn't hang, it be hang, great hang, if hang, the money went back into the communities it comes out of? Oh, yeah, I mean, the, well, yeah, well that, yeah, I mean, that's another thing. But imagine if you funded your health budget by, by <laughs> determining yeah, how much money people put on gambling. I mean, you, 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 there'd be an outcry. So yep. uh, this, this just unpacks what it is we're doing here because... As you've talked about in your intro and, and through these questions, we've normalised it to such a degree that no one really looks at it. And and that was the other reason I wanted to look at it too, because it seems to have this sort of benign presence. So how does it work? And that is curiosity, really. And and so we're, we're finding out. Uh, Guy, and I thank you very much. That was a really interesting discussion and it's generating pl plenty of action on the text. I'm sure it'll generate calls. So thank you for... Um uh, joining us uh, this morning. When's the next one out? Next story is out tomorrow. So okay, and where do people that. find We're it? Run them over the next. Yeah, it'll be it'll be on RNZ on one. Of, oh, it's your it's your favourite uh, station, isn't it? Well, you know, um, my, old, be, my, it, my old beat. <laughs> yeah. Right, and our website, and, and then you'll, it'll, you, you, sorry, rnz.co.nz, and you'll also see it flicked across the other media because the Herald and stuff, and those guys pick, pick those stories up too. So, um, yeah, we're running them over the next couple of weeks. Next one out tomorrow. Good stuff, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Have a great day. That is uh, Guy and Espiner, investigative journalist at Radio New Zealand. And those, I think, some, there's an interesting discussion about Lotto. Are you a Lotto, inverted commas, player? Are you a gambler? Makes you a gambler, you know that? I buy the occasional lotto ticket, I don't know, when I'm feeling a bit down, when I'm dreaming that the platform's going to come crashing down in a heap around my ears. I buy a lotto ticket as just some sort of ridiculous insurance policy.